With Election Day just over two weeks off, Rita Braver checks in with a candidate who's running for Congress and poised to make history. It's a typical election year scene. Congressional candidate works the crowd at a college football game. How are you? Very good to see you. But Sarah McBride's simple act of handshaking at Delaware State University could lead to a turning point in American history. If elected, you will become the first trans member of the U.S. House of Representatives. What does that mean to you? It is a testament to Delawareans that the candidacy of someone like me is even possible. I, Sarah McBride, do proudly swear. When Sunday morning first met McBride during the pandemic, she was already making history as the first trans person ever elected to a state Senate seat. Now at age 34, with almost two terms under her belt, she's running for higher office, but says it is not about her identity as a trans woman. I think that folks know that I'm personally invested in, in, in equality as an LGBTQ person, but my priorities are going to be affordable childcare, paid family and medical leave, housing and health care, reproductive freedom. Her Republican opponent in the congressional race is a former Delaware State police officer. Hi, my name's John Whalen. His top priorities are stopping illegal immigration and reducing the federal debt. I think we're going too far to the left and spending's way out of control. He did not want to do an interview for this story. But during a brief phone conversation, when I asked if McBride's being a trans woman would be a factor in the race, he said, there's more important things than that. Professor Dana Young agrees. I think voters really do want to hear about other issues. She is director of the Center for Political Communication at the University of Delaware. Some years ago, she co-authored a study on attitudes toward transgender candidates. We asked people um, if they would be willing to support a transgender candidate um, if that candidate were from their own party. And the results showed that there really was not a lot of support for a transgender candidate. But now she questions whether that study would hold up today, especially because it wasn't tied to a specific transgender candidate like Sarah McBride. And people know her now. People know her now, especially in a state that's small. By now, Delaware voters are familiar with McBride's story, including how she met her future husband, a trans man named Andrew Cray, at an Obama-era White House reception. Andy was the kindest, funniest, smartest person that I had ever met. Ray would die from cancer just four days after their wedding. Professor Young says all that has strengthened Sarah McBride. Oh, she's tough. I do not worry about her ability to take whatever attacks are likely to come her way at the national level. But on the national level, the Republican candidate for president is putting transgender issues front and center. The transgender thing is incredible. For example, falsely charging that school children are undergoing surgical procedures. Your kid goes to school and comes home a few days later with an operation. I wouldn't be the first person in Congress to be part of a community that Donald Trump has said outrageous things about. There are members of Congress who have repeatedly railed against trans people. How are you going to make peace with them? I think the ones who are really caught up on this, the folks who are those professional provocateurs, they're not going to work with any Democrat. They can barely work with their own Republican colleagues. A recent poll by the University of Delaware had McBride leading in this heavily Democratic state by more than 20 points. How are you? Good. Sarah. And if she is elected, Sarah McBride believes that she will not be the last trans member of Congress. We know throughout history that the power of proximity has opened even the most closed of hearts and minds. And I still believe that 
the power of proximity taps what I believe to be the most fundamental human emotion, which is empathy.